Morning everyone, I'm doing bird photography again this week and I've come out to a local lake and I'm hoping I might even see a kingfisher. So the thing that inspired this is I was here last week and I did actually see a kingfisher. So I'll show you that on screen now. So I'm here again, I'm hoping that I might see it. I've been here plenty of times before and haven't seen it, so who knows, but even if I don't, there's still plenty of other birds here, so hoping to get some good shots. So when I came last week, I was using my Z7 and my 7200mm lens. Uh, that's just what I had on me at the time. And uh, it wasn't really ideal because even at 200mm, the distance I was away from the Kingfisher meant that I wasn't getting a tight shot at all. And I don't think I was even zoomed in at 200mm because I was in such a panic when I saw the Kingfisher. I was like, ah, quick. And uh, I think I took the shot around about 140mm or something, 150, something like that. So it wasn't ideal. The good thing with the Z7 is I was able to crop in because it's 45.7 megapixels. I had a lot of scope to crop in, but even still, the bird was quite small in the scene and that meant that the, the image is not very high resolution in the end. So I've come today with my D7500 and my 70 to 300 millimeter lens. So I can go into 300 millimeters with this and because it's a crop sensor camera, that gives me a little bit of extra reach as well. You times your uh, focal length by 1.5 so with this at 300 millimeter, the equivalent on a full frame would be something like 450 millimeters. So I'm hoping if I do see the Kingfisher or any other birds for that matter, I'm gonna really be able to zoom in and get a nice tight shot on that bird. The one thing I've noticed using this, um, which I don't notice on my Z7 is that just the kick from the mirror. When you're using a mirrorless, there's just obviously no kick because the mirror's not flapping up. But I always forget just how much of a kick that really is when you're, when you're using a, a normal DSLR. So uh, it is a factor because that little kick just creates a little bit of motion. So you've got to make sure that your shutter speed is nice and high. But you need it nice and high for birds anyway. Right, let's crack on. Okay, so seen a couple of blue tits, um, some robins, ducks, um, pigeon. <laughs> uh, no kingfisher yet, but i um, been reliably informed by a gentleman a bit further down the path that the kingfisher nests a little bit further up here. So headed up there, see what I can find. Who knows, it might be there, it might not be. So there's quite a few birds up in the tops of the trees here, uh, but they're not the best ones to get really, for three reasons. 
One is that, well, they're just a bit too far away really when they're high up. Even with the 300mm lens, they're a bit too far away and they're going to be small in your picture. The second reason is that when you're shooting into a bright sky, you've got the background illuminated, but the bird is a silhouette, so that's not great. And the third reason is it's just better to have them on eye level, really. The picture just looks much better when the bird's lower down on the same level as the camera, you get a much stronger picture. So for my settings, I'm using aperture priority mode mainly. So with that, I can just set my aperture, usually on the lowest F number I can, just to let as much light in as possible. And then my camera will automatically adjust my shutter speed accordingly. And I want to make sure that that doesn't drop below a minimum of a thousand for birds. So I'm usually just adjusting my, my ISO level and then watching what that does to my shutter speed. And when in between shots, I'll usually keep it higher than normal, just so, so you know, I might have it on about, say, 2,000, just so that if I see a bird, it's better to have that higher ISO and be too high than it is to be too low, if you know what I mean. I don't want it on, say, 800 and then see a bird, take the shot and it's blurry. I'd rather have it higher, get the shot, it'd be sharp, even if it's a little bit more grainy. Okay, so I haven't seen the Kingfisher unfortunately. I've been to all the spots where I've seen it before and it's just not turning up today. I don't know if it's because the water's a little bit iced over, maybe it can't fish and I don't know. I'm not an expert on these things, but haven't seen it. That's the, the top and bottom of it. Uh, but I've got plenty of other shots. I've got some robins and blue tits and uh, quite a few water birds. So um, yeah, gonna get back now, see what we've got, see what we can uh, make out of it. And uh, definitely we'll be back for the Kingfisher though. So no kingfisher, unfortunately. That's just how it goes sometimes. You go without the vlogging equipment and the bird is there and then you go back with the vlogging equipment and it's not. Nothing really you can do about that. Um, hopefully next time I go it'll be there. But I'm not complaining too much. I think I got some good shots of other birds and it was a really nice, crisp, fresh, frosty morning so it's always good to be out. And I'll definitely be going back to find the kingfisher so hopefully if I take the camera with me next time, uh, the vlogging camera, hopefully it'll be there and uh, not hiding. I've got one or two more shots to show you, so I'll put those on screen now. And that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe? You can click the big red button down here or on my face over there. And the next video will be out at 10 a.m. next Sunday. So hope to catch you for that one. Thanks a lot, everyone. And I'll catch you later. Bye.